Is life better in the US or Europe? I definitely feel like I have more in common with Nathaniel Drew here than just the name alone. We are Drews. I think we share a lot of the same ideas coming at it from also this unique perspective. So I've been very lucky to also have been able to experience a lot of Europe. If you add up all my time together there, I've been there for like six months across multiple trips, obviously. But at the same time, I'm obviously American. I've lived in the US. It turns out humans are not the same everywhere. Hmm. Who you are Interesting. is at least partially <laughs> influenced by where you are. Your environment literally oh, has an impact on you. And if you don't believe me, studies show this. And this- I mean, is there anyone that's not believing that? I I'm sure that there's some contrarians out there that probably says no. Absolutely, yeah, your environment is going to as rub off on from you. one continent to another. The tug of war between the US and Europe is just so intriguing to me. It just feels like this yeah. endless- Yeah, oh, look at that old school map. I Czechoslovakia in here and Yugoslavia. It just feels like this endless battle between the new and the old Taco world Bell. in the West. There's hey, no hey, hey. There are Taco Bells in Europe. I've been to some of them. It's really different there, though. And wrong, obviously, Tastes when it comes to a discussion well. like this of cultural comparison. There's just trade-offs. It turns out that- I'm really excited to see what he says. Obviously, he's an American, but he's lived in Europe for a lot longer than I have. I just have a lot of focus on, because I make videos about this stuff literally every day, like, I got a lot of, like, back information it's logged in my head. You can't have it all. I think the human race really benefits as a species from our differences. Plus, it's really fun to articulate the things that I'm seeing take place in the world. And so that's the inspiration Absolutely. behind this piece, comparing the life that I've lived for 19 years in the U.S. to the one that I've lived for five years nice. here in Europe. And how nice. my view of things continues to evolve. You know what's crazy too is I also have met a lot of Americans that have moved to Europe in my personal life. Love asking them this question too. Anecdotally, most of the Americans tell me they enjoy Europe more. Now, national stereotypes are nothing new, right? One of the easiest ones to point to is the idea that there's more introversion in Asia, for example. Generally speaking, massive generalization and more extroversion in other places like Brazil. There are exceptions. Yeah. Which is so funny that he, he chose kind of those two places specifically, especially because Japan in Asia and Brazil have a very strange connection. To all generalizations, right? But there's also a grain of truth. You know, the jokes that we make about these sorts of things wouldn't be funny if they were completely inaccurate. If I were to say, oh, the US is a quiet country that <laughs> is very respectful to all other nations and <laughs> doesn't make a lot of noise. I lose all credibility, right? You just don't believe me because yeah. there's not really a lot of truth to that. Now, no, while I- we're very loud. I didn't even know that we're that loud, but we are- we made a few pieces exploring cultural comparisons between different parts of the world, different countries and different regions. I want to dig a little bit deeper this time. Beyond superficial comparisons like, oh, Europeans use air conditioning a lot less than Americans. <laughs> yes, produce is a lot cheaper, yeah. a lot higher quality in Europe the food. than in the United States because the governments subsidize that sort of thing because people- Definitely if you, uh, I'll give you a really like basic level take right now. I'm gonna say this and maybe people will disagree, but if you're not making a lot of income, there's gonna be more social barriers in Europe. You're gonna have a better life there. But on the opposite side of the spectrum, if you are making a lot of income, if you're making a lot of money, you're probably gonna have a better time in the US, depending on what state, you're gonna get possibly tax less. That's definitely something that I had noticed. I own take when traveling back and forth. We'll care about it a lot more. And yes, technology is a lot more affordable in the United States, partially because because of taxation on imports, but also because as a society, there's more of an orientation towards innovation. And one of the ways that keeping up with the Joneses manifests itself in the US is having the latest shiny thing. But I wanna dig deeper into the character of these two continents. And I think it's also interesting because, you know, we're, we're judging, oh, continents. Like, on a, oh, that's that throws everything off. I don't know if he really meant that. I don't think we're gonna be comparing Mexico to Europe at all, but, or Cuba to Europe. I just wanna preface your experience is gonna be drastically different depending on what state or what European country you're coming from. I mean, just with that factor alone, it's, it's kinda hard to even do this comparison. Trends that I'm noticing in people that live in these two continents. Oh my God, there's no lanes. There are no lanes. <laughs> Fair warning. Win in Albania. Just my opinions. I am just I'm glad sharing that, my observations. I'm glad that we're bringing up Albania because I wasn't sure if we're just really focused on France versus like New York or something. When we're talking Europe, I want I want all Europe. That I see in the world and within myself. So take it or leave it. And if you disagree with something that I say, please feel free to share it in the comments. This is supposed to be fun. I find this sort of thing fun. Oh yeah. I think this is a really fun topic to talk For about. For every point I'm going to make here, I'm going to really try, despite my biases, yes, I chose to live in Europe. Yeah, so he, obviously, yeah, that's, I love that he pointed that out. Obviously, he's going to enjoy Europe more than the US probably. The but I'm sure he's gonna be principled. I think he's there are been principled in other videos. On both sides. 
So he probably will admit, Americans you know, are known for their patriotism, literally thinking to themselves, we are the best. And that's definitely not everyone, but enough people do think that, that it's a real thing. This really cracks me up because, you know, that's got to be one of the fastest ways that I can think of to take <laughs> to someone piss, off. To piss like, people off, exactly. Likes the guy who shows up at the... Yeah, I know, I know. This is a, this is a problem. I mean, <sighs> this annoys everybody, not just Europeans, the entire world. And won't stop talking about how they're the best. As I'm sure you can tell, this really annoyed me quite a bit, having grown up in the US, but with immigrant parents. But a lot of Americans really believe this. And yes. what doesn't help matters is the reality that a lot of people can point to the fact that the US is a world superpower. And look, there are a lot of really proud Europeans too, yes. and maybe secretly they think they're the best, okay? But it is a little bit harder to make the argument that you're the top dog right now if you're Greek or Italian, when in reality, your moment to shine came centuries ago. For the record. Yes, Greek or Italian, their moment to shine centuries ago, yeah. The UK has a very interesting spot in that argument because yeah, they've been through a lot in the last like 70 years. I don't think there's a best country. I don't think in those terms. I think different countries are good at different things. And I don't Absolutely. feel like quantitative measurements like GDP say anything about the quality of a country. Now, the reason Well, yeah, I mean, if you do like GDP per capita, Switzerland is the best country on earth, right? In fact, it kind of depends on what method you're using, but you know, it could also be Monaco, Liechtenstein, Bermuda. US falls in like way down here. And I bring all this up is because of a weird feeling that I get when I return to the US. It's this feeling that I'm in the center of the universe. And obviously I know that's not the case, mm. but oh, does he the relationship between the US and Europe doesn't work the same way both ways. Here in Europe, there's a steady stream of news coming from the US, but when I'm over there, it feels like there isn't much talk about what's going on in the rest of the world. This is such a good point and I hate this. I like that my videos kind of act, I didn't mean it to be like this, but my videos accidentally function as kind of world news. Like I learn way more making my own videos than I do from American media. Like our media doesn't cover almost anything internationally. Unless something really big happens, like a war. Most mainstream yeah. media- barely Or if our US media is specifically pushing some sort of, uh, yeah, war basically. I don't know what I was gonna say. I, was gonna, I don't know what I was gonna say. <laughs> Usually it's a war. It covers what's going on internationally. And unless you're a worldly American, and there definitely are some of those out there, yeah, you don't have a very much of an idea of what's going on out there. I think there's more and more in many ways to the US worldly does Americans feel geographic. Still, there's not enough though, clearly. Isolated. And maybe that's because- That's why I said, people get mad at me for saying that, but the US is pretty geographically isolated. I know that looking at a flat world map, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But then take a look at a globe in terms of population density, and it's just people really right here. So there's a lot of people living in Mexico too, but this is really it. And then there's two giant oceans on both sides. Not me explaining basic geography, but- Angeles and Las Vegas is bigger than the distance between Paris and London. It does feel like Europe yeah. is closer oh, to- Oh wow, that's a such a crazy point. Los Angeles to Las Vegas is longer than London to Paris. And it's way easier to get there. You have trains that go under the English Channel. That's insane. I gotta drive four hours in the desert to get to Vegas. The rest of the world. And because the distance is smaller, you can't pretend that there aren't neighbors all around you. France Plus, cannot- Europe is a lot more equally, proportionally uh, spread out in terms of population. Like the map I just showed, like there's weird just pockets of where people live in North America. Comparing that to the European continent, I mean, people are just everywhere. And a lot of those people have been there for sometimes centuries or thousands of years. Pretend Germany isn't like right there. I personally believe this is a major factor in how we ended up with the stereotype that Americans are terrible at geography world geography, maybe mm -hmm. also the stereotype that a lot of Americans are uncultured. And speaking of that, actually, yeah. culture is a confusing word. I mean, yeah, There's I, something I covered extremely that interesting in a previous video. about the whole conversation about culture. According to a lot of Europeans, the U.S. is a place that lacks culture. But that doesn't make a lot of sense because the U.S. is actually one of, if not the biggest exporters of culture in the, the whole The yellow world. bus. That's one of those things that really shocked me when I moved abroad. Everyone is exposed to the aforementioned American media and therefore American Friends. politics and current events. American music is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. Man, Honestly, like so many things. I mean, crazy how much you can explain with just like basic geography, honestly. With like a splash of history too, like the history also makes a big difference. The US has only been around for like 250 years. You could say I'm an export of the United States and I'm not sure I could argue with that. The US is like always the loudest in the room. Like and even just cities like years. New York 
are an explosion of art and it's one city in a giant country. So what are we saying here really? What are Europeans referring to? I don't think these big mainstream exports are what Europeans are referring to. I think they're talking about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis Ooh. and how much that can change from region to region. I'm talking Ooh. about the customs and traditions that have been passed down for generations, the different regional dishes that come from centuries ago. I'm talking about the superstitions or the different card games or the celebrations that take place that commemorate something that happened before modern day France or Austria or Italy even that, existed. That Bizarre is linguistic super quirks. interesting. The U.S. has always been a cool cultural melting pot, but unfortunately things do get lost after generations. Beyond the fact that there's a different language every direction you look, that architecture that changes every few hundred kilometers or miles. Am I suggesting that the U.S. Well, I'm is thinking of that Red Hot Chili Pepper song, California. Fornication. I don't know why I'm thinking about that right now. So the LA Olympics, I just saw them. Maybe that's why. No, it does. I think about Thanksgiving and Halloween and hot dogs and baseball, the Super Bowl. There are a lot of things. It's a big country. But one thing all of these things have in common is that they stretch across the entire expanse of the country. The U.S., for better or for worse, is associated with uniformity and scale. Maybe that's just a facet of being such a young country. For better or for worse. Yeah. European. But I've talked about this Technically, the U.S. is not that young of a country. It is, but on paper, it's not that young either. All these places on Earth got their independence way after the U.S. did. Now, there's other topics to talk. This is a complicated subject, but regardless, I mean, most of the world got their independence in the last 100 years. Again, it's complicated, though. Just a like, culturally speaking, it could go country. way for deeper, better, way further worse, back. Europeans see the KFCs and the Starbucks that are dotted across all of their major cities, and they see that as the mark of the U.S. and how it operates. Yeah, now, that's got to be eye rolling for this, sure. And some even criticize. I mean, even this, Americans, right? but it's still happening. I just personally have of the a sinking like feeling that. when I see the same exact strip mall in any state that I might go, and it does feel like the only way I can see the same thing in Hungary and Spain is if I go to a major chain, a lot of which that's, are American. Again, yeah. maybe this is because of size. That's a know, super a good point. Things are just feel a little more unique there. Whereas like a lot of places still feel the exact same in the US. Our train ride can take you to any one of like seven countries in Europe. And you're yeah. lucky if a four hour flight will take you outside of the US. And I think a lot of <laughs> yeah. Europeans take pride in this cultural richness, the density of different things going on, you know, being able to go to a different place so easily and not understand a word. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, that language is One really helpful in that. One major difference for me between the Europe and U.S. is the language element. And I know I care oh, about this more than most people. But I do think yeah, he's it has a polyglot, right? I think he speaks like place. five different languages. And it's one of the main reasons why I moved to Europe. Yes, you have all kinds yeah. of language diversity in places like Miami and New York, which is really cool. But overall, English would do the job in the U.S. That's yeah. really not the case. And it's really Europe. just the only other major language is, is really just Spanish, whereas Europe has, geez, 70 or more. I mean, there's 24 official languages, but 200 languages spoken across the continent in general. And I do think that the language aspect of it really immerses you. Like for me, I've talked about this before. When I when I travel, I want to be immersed in a whole nother world, which is why I don't do a whole lot of traveling in the U.S. I want the culture shock. That that is fun to me. Yes, and language is the most international probably language, the but still biggest to this factor day, to not make that happen. To speak French when you're in France means you are not having the full French experience. That's just how it is. Yes, and yeah. honestly, I love living in a world where there are many different languages and yeah. many different ways to say things and that we don't all necessarily understand each other. For yep. me, it's very stimulating that, that part is cool. seeing or hearing the different sounds and different ways that people can communicate with each other. It adds a yep. lot of color to the world. Yes, I speak Spanish, but if I go to Barcelona or spend time in Catalonia, I you know don't understand Catalan. I oh, speak yeah. Italian, but Southern Italians are difficult for me to understand, partially because of the accent, partially because of the dialects. It's just awesome richness that I appreciate so much. I agree and with kind that. of counterintuitively, it is precisely because there is that barrier there, that it's difficult to learn a language, that it's difficult to decode how people are communicating. It is extremely difficult, yes, especially at like an older age. So when people don't want to do that, I mean, I don't even blame them. You have to be obsessed. When you do unlock that door, it's like that much more incredible. That yeah. is what makes It's a key that unlocks so doors. That's really what language is. world expanding tools. I fell in love with France and with Europe 
when I did my exchange in France because I was forced to learn the language. I just had to. It's like learning how to think in a new way. There's something mm -hmm. so exciting about that to me. Without that, I would have never immersed myself in France. I would have never created the life that I have now. Speaking the language is often the difference between having a superficial tourist experience yeah. and delving deeper into the culture. I like to think- See, That's why I'll tell people like, just learn some basic words. It's kind of fun. Go, go to a Starbucks in like Hungary, just random, but learn to, Give your Starbucks order in Hungarian. I tell Americans to do that all the time or whatever language. It's really not that hard as long as you have like enough of a good enough memory to be able to just remember like three phrases. You're good and it's so satisfying. It's very interesting. Be careful. Maybe sometimes they, uh, you know, try to find the right, make sure it's not really busy. Don't, don't piss them off, okay? Give it as <laughs> but I love doing that. Remote. I did that in French too. I don't really know any French, but I ordered in French. But this was in Switzerland. It was so cool about it. I, I don't know. It's fun around a castle so that you can actually storm the castle itself. Who doesn't want to see what's inside that castle, you know what I mean? Things that really struck me the last speed time I went life, back yeah. to the US is, US is so the fast. speed of things. Well, I think he's, and, he's, he seems like he's from New York or the East Coast. Yeah, I mean, that's really fast. So is like the California pace. But I'm assuming he's gonna say Europe is slower. There's certain parts of like the deep south, obviously in the US, where life is very slow too. The fact that there are less guardrails, less people and things that are gonna slow you down or get in your way. And because of that, many people go very fast. In the US, for example, it's perfectly socially acceptable to wolf down a sandwich in three minutes and get yeah. right back to work. I'm not saying that's what always happens. Oh yeah, happens. and then I'm like meanwhile, there'll be like an Italian dude at a cafe shop for like four or five hours somewhere in Italy. And that's so fun. I love role playing as like an Italian dude at a cafe for four or five hours. That's the true experience right there. <laughs> that it's okay. People are not going to judge you. It's like a acceptable thing to do. And people will that, walk that down the like street. That was like the biggest eating. thing I've ever done that made me feel the most European is is that exact event for me <laughs> for whatever reason. Or they'll eat in their car. And in Europe, yeah. you're never going to see those. I literally of ate my car or this morning. Or if you morning. do, it's it's like a extremely rare. I, I don't know. I can't remember ever seeing it personally. These things are not okay. They're looked down upon in exactly the same way that smoking is looked down upon in the US, which goes to show you human yeah. beings are willing to draw different lines in, in the sand. France Europeans will Europe. tell you it's not healthy, right, to eat that fast, it's rushed, but it goes beyond that. It feels almost more. It, that's a really interesting point too, just because like there is so much emphasis in the US on like smoking bad, smoking bad, alcohol good though, or even in a way vaping okay, but definitely this form of tobacco in this way, don't do that or else you're going to literally die <laughs> tomorrow. No, I don't wrong. know. I think that's but, a good spot to pause and introduce a new concept. I have this running theory that there are two forces at play in shaping culture. The first is peer pressure. There's always a certain kind of pressure that exists enforced by the people around you on how things should be, how you should operate. And the other idea is normalization. It's seeing a certain kind of behavior that's very widespread around you to the point where you get desensitized to it and you find it normal. So let's talk about some examples of this. I wanna talk about work here for a second, which feels very related to the speed of things in my mind. The US is a work. super competitive society. There's a lot of peer pressure to work harder and longer. And if you don't, somebody will be there to replace you. No guardrails, very... no off switch. So I don't know if he's going to talk about this, but the Germans got some pretty hardcore work culture as well. So it's, yeah, that's a similarity that the U.S. has with a specific European country that definitely differs in, you know, like a place like Italy or Spain. So it leads to a more, a more laid back work culture way of living, I find. This leads to a dynamic where there's very little vacation time. And not just that, people don't take that vacation time. You're lucky to get even a couple of weeks, but it's been normalized to not even necessarily take that time. That becomes a sort of like self-perpetuating yeah. cycle it does feel like there's a fear of stopping. So there's the peer pressure and the normalization of work that's taking place in the US. And the same is at work in Europe, but just in a very different way. In Europe, I feel a sort of peer pressure to not work at certain times, like on Sunday, because mm. it's seen as insane and unhealthy. Yeah. <laughs> and because Europeans treasure their vacation time I can see and that really thinking, stick though. to it, it has a normalizing effect. I don't look at time off in the same way I used to. I'm going to realize it's good to unplug, to recharge. Yes, you know? that was a big thing that I, it took me a minute to learn, especially here on YouTube, because I used to work on Sundays. I used to work pretty much every single day. Now I'm like, oh, there's huge value in just taking a little bit of time for yourself. And not have everything revolve around work. So there's pros and cons to both sides here, because I think the U.S. is a really incredible incredible place for the ambitious if you want to yeah. advance your career. And that feeling of yes. ambition all around you can be infectious. I felt it as like a fresh wave of energy. The only thing is 
it doesn't feel conducive to a healthy rhythm over the long term. And the thing about grocery shopping, you know, I was seeing a lot of people order on Instacart or Uber Eats or whatever, and it's not like those things don't exist in Europe, but there's like a, an emphasis on efficiency in the US. Here in Europe, a lot of people will shop for groceries on a very regular basis. I don't know why, I'm just like thinking, because that was a thought process that I had after I returned. Like the U.S. is kind of like Las Vegas in a way. Like it's a big dice roll. The opportunity to win big is here, but you can also go bankrupt, lose everything. Like it's it's just a, it's a, there's a way bigger range. I feel like if you live outside of Europe or the U.S. and you're thinking about moving to one of those places, if you're trying to go big or go home in terms of professionally, well, yeah, there it is. It's almost daily or every other day for fresh produce, and they'll buy in season. There's nothing really efficient. I think you can't that, win big in healthier. Europe, obviously. But you're definitely gonna get taxed more and tastier now I wanted to talk a little bit more about acceptable behavior because it's related to this point I made about peer pressure and normalization there are clearly different ideas about work but also just what is acceptable behavior in general I find that there's a lot more of an anything goes kind of attitude in the US than in Europe growing up each year there would be a pajama day which was this really fun day where you go to school oh yeah in pajamas I did this when I was like 11 12 years old and you I'm just not like sure what happened maybe this has always been the case and I didn't realize it but it really struck me that I will see adults full-grown adults walking around in pajamas in the US I saw it when I was yeah. there just a few weeks ago yeah. I have never seen that in Europe and in fact it's funny the opposites taking place here in, in Paris where women in my life in particular will come and visit and they feel they cannot go out without dressing well because Paris is such a capital of yeah. fashion and Dude, I, good, I dress I like a bum like pretty much every day. I don't go out in pajamas, but I dress like a literal bum, like sweatpants. It's not good. I mean, I feel like I shouldn't dress like that, but I just don't care. <laughs> I do draw a link. I don't know how related they are, but in my mind, they're connected between this casualness and the American dream. You're allowed to dream about things that feel ridiculous or impossible. And maybe that contributes to the startup culture that exists in the US, the entrepreneurial spirit, and of course, I should say there's nuance there. There are differences between the coasts of the United yeah. States and the middle of the country. Yes. There are differences across the different countries in Europe on this particular mm -hmm. issue and okay. all issues. That's good that you're talking about this. I feel a different vibe when I'm here in Europe. And I have found that this has had that a positive effect in my life. Map. This is one thing I'm really grateful for from my time in the US. It's this mindset of like going for it, taking risks, and figuring out a lot of the rest later on. Look. Yeah. I'm aware that there's a lot of psychoanalyzing going on here. And maybe the way that I see the world says a lot more about me than the world. I'm open to that possibility. But what I love about making these cultural comparisons is the fact that it's always a reminder that there's more than one way to live life. I think yeah. a lot of life is shaped by our values and the things that we choose to stand by. And a lot of it is based off of what resonates, what feels right. If you have the privilege to travel or to move to another place, it can be a world expanding experience. But even if you can't do that, being aware of the biases inherent yeah. in living in a particular you place, don't need because to. there are always biases, can lead to a richer, more well-rounded experience of life, I think. Life is full of trade-offs. Yeah, just still, you can still learn about these places even if you don't have the opportunity yet. There's still a lot to learn. We live in the digital age, the internet, learn so much. But I do believe in the power of picking and choosing what works for you. You deciding what your trade-offs are to the extent that you can. I really try my hardest to embody the best of all the places that I've ever lived in. It's just fun, I guess, to see how different groups of humans operate. And I think we can better appreciate the yep. world with contrast. Anyway, I hope- Even I considered like permanently moving to Europe about a year ago, I eventually came to the conclusion that I just can't. Like I, you know, love traveling there, love visiting, but living permanently, it's just not for me. I, I couldn't do it. But definitely thought about it seriously. Maybe if I had considered doing it when I was young, like in college, then yeah, that probably would have been more likely. But at this point, I think I'm too set. I like my little world that I've built here at this point. Awesome video as always by Nathaniel. He helps bring out a lot of topics that I've also wanted to talk about, but I always forget about doing in videos. Big thanks to my patrons this month. I tried to kidnap Drew again, but he put me in his basement. Help. Drew's Argentinian grandpa. I can't sleep I'm back without boys. Drew's voice. Kansas. Nord. Tiger. Archaeology. A fat caramel. Connor Pavlik. The beautiful Megan Underwood. Inquisitor Frederick Zero. Dillon. John Denver. Kansas Cameron was King Bear Hayes. Loves in Lustigo. The Mexican. Sebi, if you hear this, 